If you are currently renting or considering renting and want to buy a home, this video is for you. Hi everyone, I'm Sophie Thomas with the Holzman Group at Coldwell Banker Realty. And with me today is Mike Fagan, one of our most experienced local lenders who is a champion when it comes to first time home buyers. Today, we're gonna to go through um, some objections that we hear from buyers today about why they might wanna wait or put off home buying even though they want to buy a house. So Mike, say hi and we'll get started. Hey there. Hi, everyone. Hey, again, I, this this look here, this sunburn look, I have not been to Florida for the holidays. Unfortunately, you had to go to the dermatologist. So pardon my uh, appearance. And if you want to take me off uh, camera, Sophie, by all means, do so. <laughs> oh, you're good. All right, Mike. So okay. I've talked to a lot of buyers on a daily basis. And one of the things I hear a lot is, um, well, I'm, I'm waiting for the market to shift. Mm -hmm. What would you say we to that? that a lot as well. And the market has shifted. Um, there's also a lot of misleading information about how this market may continue to shift. Some are calling it a seismic shift is coming in a housing bubble, but that's as far from the truth we see. Um, this market is built on a whole different foundation than what happened back 15 years ago when we did have a housing bubble. And I, I would just say that waiting for the market to shift, you might be waiting for a very long time because if it doesn't shift, you're losing an opportunity. If it does shift, well, then how much of a shift are you waiting for? So Timing, I believe, is very difficult to accomplish in any investment move, including buying a home. Yeah, so that's a really good point, Mike. And one of the other things I hear a lot is, well, I hear the interest rates are going to go down in the spring. Shouldn't I wait till then? And there's a lot of speculation there as well. And like any time we start a new year, there's a ton of speculation of what's coming around the corner in 2023. Inflation is the key driver to interest rates. We don't know how fast inflation is going to come down. We do know it's going to come down at some point. Things do move in cycles, but waiting for the rates to come down might be costly because there's an opportunity to buy now before a lot of other people thinking the same way. And we have this sort of a popular saying in the market now, you marry the house, but you date the mortgage. And what I mean by that is if you buy a home now and rates fall later, then guess what? You refinance and then your home just got less expensive. So again, timing is the key element here. A lot of people are staying on the sidelines and they're trying to time the market, whether it be the real estate values or interest rates, but timing is very difficult to pull off and, and to perfection. So that brings me to my next common thing that I hear buyers say, which is the refinance cost you mentioned could offset the interest rate, but doesn't it cost me money to refinance a mortgage? There is a cost. You'll hear some lenders advertise no cost refinances. All they do is build that into the interest rate. But the typical refinance cost, it really boils down to just some loan and title charges. On average, about $3,000 here in Maryland, um, far less than what your closing costs are to purchase the home, okay? And that refinance cost, as long as you can recover within 12 to 24 months, that's kind of the window that you're gonna to use to make your gauge on whether you refinance or not. And we run that analysis all the time. And just a quick note about timing the market. I have this conversation with clients that are refinancing their home and they say, I wanna refinance, but I'm gonna wait till the rates come down. If you wait too long, you never know where the bottom of those rates are until they bounce back up. And every month that goes by where I have a client who says, I'm not gonna refinance yet, there's an opportunity cost because they could be saving right away. Some people in the last couple of years refinanced more than once because each time the cost versus the benefit made sense. So you might refinance once, you might refinance twice, but whenever you face that decision, you want to pull the trigger when the cost versus benefit analysis makes sense for you. Okay, folks, he just said a lot and you probably lost him at one point, but I will reassure you if you are thinking about refinancing in the future, Call Mike because he can talk you through the analysis of it from the financial standpoint. And my last thing that I hear quite often, and I want to just validate these buyers that say this to me, they say, I'm not financially ready. And I hear you. And Mike and I talked about this before we got on the call. So Mike, please share what we talked about. <laughs> so if you're not financially ready, Sophie or I would, would advise you of that. You can tell sometimes when people want to buy but they're just not quite there financially. And we didn't, we're not here to crush dreams, but we want to keep it real that there is a true responsibility to home ownership. You, you inherit responsibilities beyond just the cost to buy a home. So when we do a consultation, we will pinpoint strengths and weaknesses. But for those who are ready, willing, and able to buy, and they're simply on the sidelines just trying to time the market, there is an absolute potential opportunity cost in many ways if you do wait 
when you are ready. Well, whose mortgage am I paying if I'm renting? I'm just. You're paying your landlord's mortgage. You're paying down the principal of your landlord's mortgage balance when you could be making your own payment to your own mortgage, building wealth. You know, every time you make a mortgage payment, you're setting some money aside, which is paying down the principal of that loan, building what's referred to as equity in your home. Each month you pay your landlord's mortgage, you're building your landlord's equity rather than your own. Folks, that word you just used, equity, is something I didn't know until I was 25. People who have not come from a household where they talk about finances, if you want to build wealth, learn the term equity, call Mike, call myself, figure out a way to do it because people actually, Mike and I talked about this too. Where is most of the money in a household tied up? Where is the savings? It's usually in the house, right, Mike? So the vast amount now. of wealth in today's economy of most consumers who own homes, they have more wealth in their home than any other investment vehicle. The majority, not all, but a vast majority of families and, and homeowners have built their wealth through equity in their home. It's never too early to start. And I'd say it's difficult nor impossible to time the market perfectly. So thank you so much, Mike. Um, we're going to cut this video off today, but I want you to all to know that Mike's available. I'm available for a consult one-on-one, -on -one, just to call if you want, just to see if it's something feasible for you. And everything that we've said here is true today, what buyers are saying, and Mike is not skewing anything. There are ways to make this financially a reward for you and not a detriment at all. So give us a call, reach out. Thank you, Mike. Again, it was great to meet you today. <laughs> thank you, Sophie. Take care, Thank everyone. You.